Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News. My next guest is coming off of another big win, UFC Vegas 79. It's Brian Battle back on the program. How's it going, Brian? Dude, uh, it's going uh, sensationally. Thank you for having me back. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, you know, talk to you again about, you know, fights and whatnot. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, I mean, let's just get right there. I mean, just kind of give me your first thoughts on the win. Obviously, uh, AJ Fletcher is a really tough opponent. This was a matchup that I know myself, I was I was really looking forward to stylistically. Um, just kind of talk to me a little bit about your performance, how the fight played out versus your expectations, and uh, ultimately getting the win. Yeah, you know, um, it's, always, um, it's always cool to be um, – the first person to get finishes on somebody, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, you know, first person to, you know, knock out Takashi, you know what I'm saying? First person to, you know, finish Gabe in the UFC, you know what I'm saying? First person to, uh, finish Fletcher in his whole career, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, it, I think it was just, it came down to pressure and, um, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, the, the, the teeps, they didn't have, uh, uh, a proper response to the teeps. So we didn't have to go really deep into the game plan. Uh, once I saw that those teeps were landing, um, you know what I'm saying? I, I really just, especially with the reach, uh, the reach being where it was, I saw, you know, I felt like he wanted me to come in a little bit so that he could time it and then, you know, close that distance easier. You know what I'm saying? And I just, um, didn't want to give that to him. I was like, nah, man, if you want, if you don't get in, you're going to have to earn that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to cover that distance. You're going to have to do that all by yourself. I'm not going to help you uh, shorten that reach. So, uh, and then once I saw that the teeps were landing, um, I just knew, you know, he had a really good poker face. He played it off really well, but, you know, I know from personal experience, if you don't have, it's just like leg kicks, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have a response to the leg kicks, um, then it's just, it, it's debilitating as the fight goes on. So, um, you know, it it, it it was a good fight, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt pretty confident about putting him away in the second round going into the fight. So, um, you know, things went, um, I didn't really, my wife called a submission. I'm not going to lie. My wife was saying she thought going into the fight, she had called that a couple weeks out. She said, I think you're going to submit them. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I thought I would get a TKO in the second round. But, you know, second round finish, we'll take it out. We can get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because as you mentioned, I want to ask you about that because he threw those uh, those early teeps uh, almost like a jab, right? Like, obviously, you're <laughs> utilizing that huge reach advantage that you had. I think it was like a 10-inch reach advantage. Um, and obviously, you know, as you mentioned, he had a good poker face and all that, but did you expect him to kind of, as the fight went on, like kind of slow down a little bit because of the accumulation of damage that you were getting with those kicks early? Oh, I, I knew it was, it wasn't, um, it was inevitable. You know what I'm saying? Cause those are, you know, you can compare to a jab, but it's, it's a little bit more devastating, like a jab, you know, um, I mean, depending on how stiff it is, you know what right. I'm saying? It's, it's more something that will, you know, you know, win you the fight optically because it'll just mess up someone's face. But this, you know, it's like you're really getting stabbed in the stomach. Like I'm driving the balls of my feet into your abdomen and I was hitting the same spot over and over and over again. You know, that's my leg, too. You know what I'm saying? That's not my arm. That's my leg and my whole body um, getting thrown into each one of those. So, um uh, and it's honestly, if it just kept on going like that, that's why I felt um, he was in the second round. He was trying so hard to clinch and to stay in the clinches because he knew that that wasn't staying out there wasn't an option. And if staying out there at range wasn't an option, that means he had to be in close. And, um, you know, I don't think he wanted to stay in boxing range too long. You know what I'm saying? Even if we did have hand exchanges, you know, he was in and out, in and out, in and out. So if out wasn't an option and in was uh, less than ideal, you know, we had to clinch up. And, you know, I think um, it was a surprise. I had the advantage uh, in the grappling, too. So, yeah, no, those tips, those tips are key. You know what I'm saying? You have to have a response to those because if you don't have a response to those, then, you um, you know, you can you you can get your soul taken with those teeps. You know what I mean? 
And I was rewatching the fight this morning. And I think a, a key moment from the fight, I think it was like 20 or 30 seconds left in the first round. He uh, he landed a good elbow strike. And then right after that, to start off the second round, really it looks like your activity level really picked up in that second round to start off. Was that almost kind of like a wake-up call to you in terms of to, to really ramp up your activity in that second round? Or kind of what was kind of the message in between rounds? Um, well, uh, it was more, it was definitely a little bit of a, a wake up cause I felt like I would have won the first round if that wouldn't have happened, but I was going to pick it up in the second round anyways, you know, cause I had, I kind of made all my reads, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like, uh, had a feel on what his timing was, where the range was. And so, um, and like I said, I spent the whole round just, you know, throttling his body. So I knew, you know all right, let's turn up the heat now. Let's turn up the pressure, you know, you know, make them melt. And, you know, that's that's kind of what happened, you know what I mean? Absolutely, man. And uh, I got to ask you, this is uh, this is now a few times now that we've spoken uh, since you made that move to welterweight. I want to ask you, like, obviously, in retrospect, you're having a lot of success at welterweight now versus, I mean, you obviously had success in middleweight too, but <laughs> is there part of you that almost wonders what it would be like if you – if you just started your career at welterweight or even made that move to welterweight earlier in your career, or just kind of talk to me a little bit about that. No, no, I never, um, I never think about that because it wasn't something that I ever thought was really possible. Um, and you know, if it wasn't for 185, then I wouldn't have been on tough, you know what I'm saying? And, um, tough is something I look back on so fondly and the people I fought at 185 give me a lot of, um, confidence um because it's like you know i mean if you're talking about power like you know i got hit by big strong you know powerful guys at 185 so you know it's like at 170 you know what i'm saying like you, you just don't hit hard enough you know what i'm saying i went against elite grapplers at 185 you know what i'm saying like you know um you know someone like petrovsky you know what i'm saying so um you know, when you talk about grappling strength, you know what I'm saying? Like, unless you are really, really special, it's like I've already felt um, some high-level looks in, like, every department of, you know, combat sports at 185. So, um, no, nah, no, nah, I never uh, – to long answer to a short question, no, nah, no, nah, I never really think about, you know, what would have happened if I would have started my career at welterweight. I think um, my confidence wouldn't be – like it is if I hadn't spent as much time as I did at 185. Whenever a fighter makes that drop in weight, I feel like one of the first questions is like, is that durability is the chin going to hold up? And and so far, like your durability has been awesome at 170. Do you feel like those, those middleweight experiences have, have benefited you almost in a way since you made that move to 170? Uh, well, yeah, 1000% because uh, the thing is, is, you know, it's not an easy cut to get to 170, but overall, the welterweight lifestyle isn't one that, like, depletes me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not less of a man than I was at 185. In fact, I think I'm stronger and faster. Now I'm just more of an athletic person. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, no, definitely, you know, getting hit by, you know, even when I was an amateur, you know, fighting someone like Impa, you know what I'm saying? Getting hit by Impa, you know what I'm saying? Seeing, you know he's knocking out people at 205 now, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm, you know, it's stuff like that. It's just like, okay, you know what I'm saying? You know, you can get punched. Like, it's not anything where I think I have a a special chin, but I know that my chin's not made of glass, you know what I'm saying? So um, as long as I keep my hands up, I should be all right. In the post-fight press conference, you spoke a lot about your team, and, and we've spoken a lot about your team in the past too, but I want to kind of get some insight from you in terms of, like how important your team is during fight week specifically, like leading up to the event, going through the weight cut and all that. Like how important is your team in terms of just going through that whole process leading up to fight night? Well, um, you know, obviously um, leading up to before fight week, you know what I'm saying? Just as far as preparation goes, you know what I'm saying? Um, once someone like, uh, especially at our gym, you got a couple people you're going to work with, but then you kind of have your main person, you know what I mean? 
And um, especially if, if that if you don't have a fight and you're that person's main person, it's it's really um, you know what I'm saying like uh, you're gonna get beat up a little bit because you know you're you're giving that person a look, you know what I'm saying, and you're really sacrificing um, yourself to you know help make your teammate sharper and everything like that. So that's always a big thing. Um, and then you know. The, the time, you know, you spend breaking down film with coach and then talking about different things with coach and, you know, figuring out how you're going to do this and how you're going to do that. Um, and then, you know, fight week. Yeah, man, you know, um, my team is they go above and beyond. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they help me out with things that I'm not even asking for help for. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just reading my body language and seeing how much energy I got. And they'll be like, yo, I, Hey, I got that back. You know what I'm saying? L little things like that. It's just like, it's, it's really unbelievable. And you talk about the actual weight cut. Jeez Louise, man. No, that is, it's something I don't even want to think. Cause you know, back in the day, you know, when you're an amateur and everything like that, that and that's one of those things is like, um, like I could cut to 185 by myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I did that a lot. Uh, cutting the welterweight by myself would be really, really hard. That would be, it would be tough, it, you know, and, um, you know, having the support of the boys, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, people there to help you with like every little thing. So you can just focus on doing what you need to do to sweat and, you know, get the weight off, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, be able to fully appreciate it unless like you've, you've done it yourself and you've had that, um, you know, that camaraderie where, you know, you had people who were there helping you and, you know, you, you achieved this thing together, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's really, it's really cool. And it's like, um, you know, it just makes you appreciate things, you know, weight cuts can get emotional sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've, I've been known to, to cry every once in a while during a weight cut, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, no, my team, I, I couldn't be. Uh, more grateful for you know the people I have you know supporting me and backing me up and whatnot. There was something interesting that I noticed as well uh, during your post fight interview with uh, Michael Bisping. He was asking you to uh, you know who you want to fight next, like who you want to call out and all that. And what I found really interesting is um, your answer to that was was kind of talking about like hey like I don't really need to call anybody out because you know. These guys are essentially, you know, protecting that number next to their name in the rankings and all that. And, you know, don't really want to fight as it, to the activity level as me. Like, kind of talk to me a little bit about that. Like, how frustrating is it for you that some of these welterweight contenders and, and even middleweight contenders are, are almost turning down fights because they want to stay in the midst of that, of the rankings and, and the hierarchy and all that? Yeah, man. I mean, and you know, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, um, I, you know, where you are in the rankings. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're in the rankings or out the rankings, that could affect how much you're getting paid to fight. So it's, I like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand it. Um, but then it's also like for me, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to uh, waste my time or give someone else, you know, clout. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to. Um, make people think about somebody that's not thinking about me you know what i'm saying like um you know i don't want to you know call someone out and that person you know isn't even even isn't even remotely thinking about me you know what i'm saying like um like i don't feel like um i need to do that you know what i'm saying so you know it's just the whole call out game in general you know my thing is i'm gonna keep on fighting i'm just gonna keep on winning fights you know what i'm saying i'm not, I'm not gonna worry about um whether people want to fight me or not or you know protecting the number or not you know i'm just going to keep on winning fights and if i keep on winning fights then you know it's inevitable you know what i'm saying people are gonna have to fight me you know what i'm saying one way or another so um that, that's really what i was trying to get across i'm just going to control what i can control and uh the rest of it will take care of itself you know what i mean you feel like that almost gets kind of talked about a little bit too much by like the media and, and fans and all that, that like you have to call somebody out in your post fight interview, or do you feel like taking your approach is something that more fighters should do in terms of, you know, just worrying about what you can control? Well, I mean, you know, it's, 
calling someone out is always like just like a quick way to like generate some hype and generate some excitement you know what i mean um but it's like you know it's like that dude you know what i'm saying like it's it's unless it's real it's not real you know what i'm saying like um you know in my past couple fights you know what i'm saying i called out ian gary and you know it's like it'll generate some excitement for like a day or two and then you know what i'm saying you know he's fighting someone in the rankings you know what i'm saying so it's just like you know there's no to me you know what i'm saying it's just uh that kind of that kind of uh excitement doesn't excite me you know what i'm saying i don't want to kind of generate that kind of hype that has nothing behind it you know what i'm saying if i really think i can get a fight uh and you know what i'm saying I, I really think you know we can build something special then i'll start talking junk about people specifically but until then you know what i'm saying all i'm gonna do is just keep on going out there and finishing people and being impressive myself you know what i mean Absolutely, man. Well, before we wrap things up here, once again, I really do uh, appreciate you making some time. It's always great to chat with you. I think this is like the fourth or fifth time that we've uh, we've done this. Oh, so I really man. do appreciate it. Uh, I want to I want to give you the opportunity to just kind of thank everybody that's uh, been with you on this journey and, and uh, with your team, your fans, your family and all that stuff. And uh, kind of give us an idea as to what you're thinking about in terms of return, uh, maybe getting one more by the end of the year or kind of just talk to us a little bit about that. Um, but well, as far as, uh, activity, I would love to get one more before the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? If, if that's possible, let's go. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as shout outs go first, uh, first and foremost, you know what I'm saying? Uh, gotta thank God I'm a blessed man. You know what I'm saying? It's just really been appreciating life you know heading into the fight and during the fight and after the fight you know life is amazing i'm i'm very blessed um uh, i need to uh shout out my wife you know what i'm saying um uh a tremendous lady who you know who's helped me a lot you know what i'm saying um you know obviously my coach um uh, me and tom we've done a, a lot of crazy things together you know what i'm saying we're, we're sitting there after this fight i'm like coach we're six fights into the UFC. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when I remember when we first started, you know, what I mean, like um, you know, it it was it was both of our dreams. You know, what I'm saying we both had that shared mutual dream of you know making it to the next level, and it's just like it's crazy. You know that was that was back in 2016, and you know now here we are. You know we're five and one in the UFC, and it's just crazy. You know we got a couple guys right behind me that are making the push to be on that that level with me so it's just it, it's surreal you know what i'm saying um you know shout out to everyone on my team you know john shamik who came out and were in my corner and helped out you know what i'm saying everyone who helped um anyone who's helped fill in for a class for me you know what i'm saying i do uh, a lot of teaching so um there have been a lot of people filling in helping me out during this fight camp so i appreciate all, all those people everyone on the fight team um you know, uh, shout out to Sharps, my new sponsor. I love those guys. Uh, shout out to Radium. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'll, I'll end my shout outs for right now. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it, man. Well, Brian, I appreciate you making some time. Always great to chat. Uh, congrats again on the win. I'm sure we'll chat again soon. And uh, thank you again for the time, man. I appreciate it. Right. You have a good one.